a happy new year good to see you guys it's been a couple of weeks since i have checked in with you and um you know actually in all honesty i've actually just um been sick the last couple of weeks and so i just took a spoonful of buckley's cough syrup and i am praying that that will be enough to get me through this facebook live without um too much coughing hey lizzie tozer good to see you you know and um really i wanted to come on because like it's new year's and, uh, you know, it's been a really quiet time uh, over the holidays and I just really felt like the last couple weeks, you know, has been a real time for me of like kind of like a forced rest and just a real time of, um, you know, I know a lot of you guys had family, you know, we have family plans and things that we wanted to do over the holidays. And for me, I actually had picked up some extra shifts at work and just because there was, you know, some more availability and some of my emerging profit stuff wasn't running right over the holidays, but I just feel like, you know, God really put the brakes on for me and I had to like pull back. And, and I think that this time of rest, you know, before we move into the next and into the new year is really, you know, important. And, you know, it's been a time of like really just going deeper in the place of intimacy and just, you know, um, you guys know I'm launching the Emerging Profits Ontario School. It's starting next week, so if you haven't applied, there's still time. But uh, yeah, it's January 1st, and we are 10 days away, so it's going to be awesome. But you know, I um, as I was spending time with the Lord and just pondering, like, there's so much excitement in my spirit for the new year and what God's doing. And um, <clears throat> 2023 year has been such an intense year of like growth and um and and just like growth and healing and advancement and vision and just really a time of like being given heavenly blueprints and strategies and things that you know are going to be uh rolled out in this year and you know the emerging prophets ontario school is just one thing there are there are more things coming but you know when i was sitting with the lord um just pondering like a, a word for the new year. He actually, um, I tend to be more of a knobby flowing prophet where I just like, you guys see me when I prophesy over you here on Facebook Live, it just bubbles up out of me. Like I just, there's no pre-planning, there's no premeditation. I just open my mouth and, you know, he fills it with words. But you know, sometimes we can receive from the Lord in different ways. And though I am primarily a knobby, I found that the Lord was, was showing me pictures and giving me visions um, in this last week, in this time of rest. And I've just been kind of like meditating on some of the things that he was showing me. And so, you know, I wanna just kind of unpack a little bit um, of that with you guys and what, what I feel like he was showing me for this year to come. You know, and so like when the Lord speaks, there are elements, of course, I take it and I look at it and I apply it to my own life. Okay, how does this apply to Jenny? And how is this practical? But there are elements that you can take for yourself because God, you know, he has his ways of doing things and there are patterns and there are things that he's doing. There are, are things that are times and seasons word words. And, you know, the Lord showed me, he showed me three different three different um, wheels, which to me represented three different types of cycles. And he kind of took me through this vision and, and, and explained a little bit about like what each of them were. And so, you know, this first, you know, I was watching and I saw this first, that it was a wheel and, um, you know, I won't go into too much detail about what it looked like, but it was a wheel of pain and it represented like um, it was a wheel of pain, a wheel of torment, a wheel of, of suffering. It was a wheel, it was representative of the cycles that we have found ourselves stuck in and we just keep going around. And they were cycles of suffering and cycles of, of, of all things negative. And so I saw a vision of this wheel with its thorns and its spikes. And, and then I saw this angel come up and the angel that the wheel was large and it was like like a ferris wheel and this angel came and the angel was as large as the wheel and i saw the angel and it had this this um it was like a, a bar in its hands and it took it and it smack it it shoved this bar into the spokes of the wheel and it brought the wheel to this abrupt and violent screeching to a halt 
And I felt like the Lord was saying that enough is enough and that there is angelic help that has been released and that God is putting a stop as we are as we're at this place of the threshold where we're moving in to the next, that there is a stop has been put. And, and it's like I saw this large angel put this, the bar in, and it was like it stopped, like the wheel could not turn because this bar was between the spokes. And so it brought it to a halt. It could not move anymore. And then there were all these these smaller angelic beings that came, and they had different tools, and they had... Um, some had clubs and tools for dismantling and I saw them come and it was like the Lord was saying enough is enough and the angelic help had been released to come and to supernaturally dismantle and destroy this which had been um, these cycles. There are cycles of pain and there are cycles of torment, cycles of things that have held us back and kept us stuck in these patterns and unable to move forward. And the Lord has been, it's been a process of bringing us to the place where we can actually receive, um, be released from these places in these cycles. And I saw, you know, as the Lord was saying, enough is enough, and I'm bringing this to an end. There was also an invitation though, and in, uh, for us to, um, you know, because it was something that was familiar. It was like, it's a cycle that was familiar and it was a place that, you know, and, and so it's like, I saw a hesitation in people and I saw some people literally run for freedom, run, run out free and clear, so grateful to, you know, be set free from, from this cycle, these cycles that had been causing so much pain in their lives. But then there were others that seemed to be in this place of confusion and, and, and standing, at the base as, as heaven was dismantling, you know, what the enemy had built. And, and I also saw people in confusion and not understanding that there was another way, you know, and so I saw that, you know, and then the Lord showed me this other wheel, this other cycle. And it was, um, I'll liken it to like, to like a merry-go-round. I think of like when I was a child um, in the park, There, there's those merry-go-rounds and you go round and round and you know, some of the ki bigger kids, you'll hold the edge and you'll kind of like run around it. And it was like, I saw us and I saw us on this wheel and I saw there was this sense of like, you know, there's this sense of like um, childlike joy and um, entertainment and enjoyment that comes from you know, the, these familiar and so familiar cycles. And so I just saw the going around and around and, and the Lord was showing me that there were some places that we were stuck and they were like childlike, um, childlike familiar ways and ways, you know, the wheel was propelled by the feet of the people that were pushing it forward. And the Lord was saying that these are cycles that are are, are things that are, are, are moved by our own works and by our own striving. And, and there are things of comfort and things of familiarity in these cycles, but it was like, it's like a horizontal kind of movement. And so there, I feel like the Lord was saying that there are some cycles that we have found ourselves stuck in and they are familiar and we keep going around and it's a thing of like going around the mountain, but because it's in this low place, it, we haven't come to the higher ele we hadn't come to the higher elevation. And so though we felt the movement and we could feel the wind and we felt like there was progress being made, I just saw the futility as I like stepped back and I saw people going round and round thinking that they were gonna get somewhere by continuing to do things the way that they had always done it. And there was that sense of comfort and in some of a way it's, it's in a sense of a way, it's like representative of like the old wineskin way of doing it. It's the way of the past. It's the way it was good for before, but it's not good for now. It was good for a level, but we're moving into another realm and another dimension as we cross over, as we've, cro as we've crossed over into the new year. And so I just, and I just saw this tender picture. I heard the voice of Jesus and he just said, come on, it's time to go. Come on, it's time to go. And this is what I talked at the beginning about feeling like the Lord put me into this like period of forced rest over the holidays. And for me, it came with 
you know, I got sick and so I got stuck at home and I had to slow down and everything came to a halt. And there's been this slowing down and this stopping and it's like the grace has lifted off of the way that we've been doing things, the way we've been running and we've been pushing and we've been like propelling these things forward and we've had this sense of like forward movement and progress and I just hear the Lord saying, enough. Come on, it's time to go. And it's like I saw this vision of him and he had this like tender compassion in his eyes and he held his hand out to me, but there was such a sternness in his voice and it was like, it is time to go. And in this vision, and this is an invitation, not just for me, but for all of you, but I took his hand, I just reached out, I took his hand, and I went with him, you know, and as I remember feeling like as I walked away from this, this, um, this scene, which provoked a sense of like childlike joy and comfort and familiarity. And I walked away, you know, not knowing, you know, there's that sense of not knowing what you're walking into, where you're going, but there is this, there was this sense of safety and security and him holding me by the right hand. And so I just hear the Lord saying that like, I am going with you. I am going before you and I take you by the right hand. And do you trust me? Do you trust me to step away and to let go of these familiar cycles of the past and these familiar cycles of your childhood? These, these ways, these ways that which were good for a season, but now it is no longer the time and the season for drinking milk. It is now the time in the season for eating meat and for for having solid food and so that which we loved and that which was good it is no more the day and the time for that and so he is saying do you trust me and will you leave that and will you leave that and will you leave your cycles of pain will you leave your cycles of of self-sabotage of self-punishment of self of self-destruction, these cycles that have kept you going around the mountain and have kept you in places of repeated pain and offense and will you move in to this next place that I have for you? You know, and so as I put my hand in the hand of Jesus and I just, you know, in this vision, it's, you know, I wasn't in a trance, it wasn't a dream, but I just, saw it play on the screen of my mind and the Lord showed me. He took me over and there was, it looked like a, like a wall, like a, it was a veiled wall, it, like a curtain. And it was just massive as far as I could look to the left or the right, I just saw. And it looked like this thick, almost translucent, but like white, pure curtain. And there was light like coming through it. And there was this sense of, of, of I need to get, to the other side because where I was standing it was dim and it was dark and there was a greater light and a greater glory on the other side and so Jesus went first and he walked through this veil and I just followed him and I saw that he didn't you know we didn't have to lift it up or go around it but it was a walking through and it was like as we walked and we passed through the veil there were things there were things that started to fall off of me and there were things that I didn't know were attached and I, I could hear like the clink of things falling to the ground. Like I could hear the sound of like chains breaking and hitting the ground and there was like, like dirt and, and, and kind of like, like slime and things that were unclean and even like, like little darts and daggers and things that had been attached to me. And as I walked through the veil, they fell and I could hear them hit the ground and there was no way for me to pass through the veil into this other glorious place with those things still attached to me. And I hear the Lord saying that we have passed through the veil and we are moving into this new place. And when I got into this new place, what I saw was a vision from a dream that the Lord had given me. I don't know the exact time. It was probably at least a year ago. Could be even more, um, maybe a year and a half ago. And this was the third veil, the th sorry, the third wheel. I talked about seeing three wheels representing cycles. 
And, you know, and unlike the horizontal, the wheel, like the marigold round in the past season, I saw it, it was, it was this wheel and it was massive and it was vertical and it was so much higher. And even though, you know, the wheel of pain was a vertical one and, and this angel came, and it, which it seemed so big and it seemed so vast and the angel was so glorious but then when i saw this other wheel it the what the wheels the cycles of the past were just seemed like nothing in comparison and so i looked and and it was like this ferris wheel but there was water that was that was pouring off of it and it was turning and i looked and the water that was fueling you know the past season it was the it, the miracle round the cycles of the past of our childhood you know, the, the miracle round, remember, they were fueled by the, the feet of children as we run and we push ourselves and we try to go around and around. But this vertical wheel, and this is the invitation of where the Lord is taking us in this season, what made the wheel turn and bring the people who got onto this like Ferris wheel type thing, it was actually driven by water that was flowing from heaven. And I looked and it was coming from above the clouds and there was water that was pouring down and it was causing the wheel to advance and it was causing those ones who got on it to come up higher and higher. And I looked and the water, it just kept flowing and flowing and it was the never ending stream of a river the river of living water that flows out from the very throne of God it was flowing out from the place the glorious place of his presence and it was turning and it was empowering us to get on and to come up into the highest place and it was like as I look at where God is showing me that he wants to take us in this time in this era and I looked at the two wheels and the cycles of the past, what he is inviting us to come and to pull away from and to step into this new level of glory. It is great and it is glorious and it is incredible. And yet there was this bit of a sadness in my heart because I could see that there were those ones who were not willing to leave the striving of the childish ways or were not willing to leave the cycles of pain that came from their tormented ways of thinking. Or there were ones that I saw even came up to the place of passing through the veil as I talked about going through the veil and there were things that were on me that fell. There were darts, there was dirt, there were chains, there were weights, there were rocks that I was carrying and I had to let them go. I had to let them fall to the ground to be able to pass through into this next thing that God had to me. And I saw that there were those who did not pass through. There were those who were not willing to let go and to let the things fall to the ground. And so they stayed on the other side of the veil. And they stayed back there. There is an invitation. Every time a prophetic word is released, it is an invitation. It is an invitation. There is an open door for us to step in to this new realm of glory, to leave behind the cycles of our past way of living and thinking and moving and striving in the flesh and to step into this new glorious realm, which is is propelled by the spirit, which is this realm that just takes us higher and higher and higher. And I got on that, I got on that Ferris wheel and, you know, I was on there with, with this spiritual mother, um, which is very symbolic of the season that I'm stepping into this year. You know, one thing that I, I forgot to mention, um, I talked about passing through the veil. So Jesus took me and I was a child and he held my hand. But when I passed through and all the things fell off, I got to the other side and I was fully grown adult and I was wearing a wedding dress. I wasn't a child. I was his bride. Clothed in white garments. And so there's this invitation. Guys, there's this invitation to come into this new realm of glory, into this new place with him. 
But to move into this new place, we cannot cling to the ways of the past. We cannot cling to the ways that we're used to. We cannot cling to our victim mentalities. We cannot cling to our, 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 um, our, our love of punishment which comes connected to religious thinking, we have to let it all go. You know, and as I saw heaven unleashed to come and to dismantle, to dismantle these cycles that had been tormenting, these cycles that had caused us so much grief and pain, these cycles that God has fully set us free from. He's fully set us free to move into this new. There was this loud voice and it was, get out of the way. Get out of the way. And there was this sense of, we have a choice. There was this sense of, and it was like I saw, you know, and I saw people flee, flee, run, run for freedom, go, go away. But then I saw others standing in this place, frozen in confusion. And there was this sense that if we don't get in line with what God is doing, if we don't get in line with the rhythms of heaven, we can miss it. And it was like heaven is coming and I just saw it coming like a bulldozer. And I saw it coming like a bulldozer to clear the way for us and to make these new paths. God is coming. He's coming like a bulldozer and anything that tries to stand in his way is going to get flattened. So get out of his way. You have to get out of his way. And this phrase keeps coming to me in my prayer time. And sometimes when I'm worshiping, there is a way that seems right in the eyes of man. There's a way that seems right in the eyes of man, but his ways are higher. And so there's this needfulness to get out of the way of God because he's going to have his way. But everything that resists is going to be flattened. And so he says, come behind me, come behind me, get in line with me and let me take you through to the other side. Yeah. And guys, what I felt and what I experienced, the joy, the, <laughs> you know, there was this sense of, you know, this wheel, this spinning wheel was massive. It was so massive and it took a, like us to heights that like you almost couldn't see the ground. It was like so high and in the natural, it would have been terrifying. It would have been so fearful and risk taking, but there was just this sense of absolute safety and security, even in these risky places, even in these new heights, in these places, because there was this sense that if you, when you got in line with this cycle that God, this glorious cycle that God is, is trying to, is bringing us into, is inviting us into, there was this, just this sense of protection, this sense of invincibility, this sense of all things were possible. And so this is the place of invitation. This is the place of invitation. Yeah, I'm just gonna say hello to you guys. I didn't wanna like stop and, and, and mess up my, my knobby flow there. Uh, Elisa Masiel, hello. Alicia jo Licia Jones, sorry, I'm probably butchering some of your names. Valerie McDonald, good to see you, lady. Connie Osmond Smith, hello. Kara Welk. Thank you. I like the pink. It's a nice, joyful color. Oh, Debbie, you like the pink too. Debbie Shakespeare, good to see you. Debbie's in Jamaica. Katrina Caputo, congratulations. Did you just get married or are you about to get married? I know that that is um, coming up. You know, Katrina, I saw that you, know, that you, so Katrina, I don't know if you just got married or you're about to get married. 
I, I am feeling there are so many people, especially um, in their like 50s, um, kind of 50s, even up to like 60, like so many precious, beautiful women that I know in my life who have um, are recently in like new relationships or engaged. And so I really feel like this is a thing of in 2024 that, you know, prophets look at patterns and cycles. You know, I've been talking about cycles, but I really feel that this is a thing of those long, you know, long weighted marriages. It's going to be a year for a lot of people of romance and of, you know, connecting with, you know, that person that, you know, their heart has been longing for their soul, their, the, their soulmate. So, you know, I'm single, so who knows if I'll fall in that category. Um, I kind of hope so. So I'll just put that out there. But um, yeah, I just, I love it. <laughs> Sorry, one second. <coughs> Hopefully I don't need another spoon of Buckley's. But I'm doing pretty good at not coughing. So I love that. Just a lot of, um, yeah, lots of ladies that I know who are so precious, going hard after the Lord, and um, quite a bit older than myself. And, um, and I just say that like I'm, I am 40 and, you know, and single, but I just, I saw that it's really beautiful that God has been connecting, um, a lot of precious women that I know of with, you know, um, good godly men. So I love that. I'm going to believe, you know, let's, yes, Kara, welcome. let's believe that for, for, for the new year. Let's call in the godly single men. I'm not really sure why I'm going down this vein, <laughs> But um, yeah, so good. Yeah, you can you drop the uh, little, little engagement ring there. Yeah, so good. Yeah, yes, let's call it. It's, it's going to be our year. And I love that. There's 17 people watching. 17 is the number for victory. This is going to be a victorious year. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do a little bit of personal prophetic ministry. If you're just hopping on now, though, go back watch the replay and just um, tune in to hear um, some of the things that I just released that I felt God was speaking to me for 2024. Hello, beautiful Katie Long. Good to see you. You know, and I've missed, I've missed my mentorship group these last couple weeks. Um, I just, you know, it's, it's been like, you know, not feeling well or real time of forced rest. But, you know, in that rest, there is this refreshing and this rejuvenating. And I'm so looking forward to breaking out in January. You know, it is January today. But if you're in Ontario and you want to be part of the Emerging Prophets Ontario first Canadian Emerging Prophets School, go to EmergingProfetsOntario.com. Fill out the application. I've, you know, I've accepted a bunch of ap applications, but I believe that there are more of you out there. There are more of you who are sitting on the fence, you know, and with the word that I released, it was the thing of like, you know, sometimes we, we, our, our words, you know, we need to stay in encouragement and comfort and, and building people up. But there is a sense when the prophetic is released, there is that sense of responsibility. There is a sense of partnering. You know, so I can release good words over you all day that are going to, you know, reveal to you God's initial design and intention. And I can tell you how amazing you are and what Christ in you looks like and how if you step into the fullness of your potential, you can do great things. But there is a needfulness for us to pay a price. There's a needfulness of us to line ourselves up and to take the promises, to mix our faith with the word and to move forward. So if you're believing God for breakthrough, if you're believing, as I'm talking about, this new level of glory that God is releasing, if you're believing to go up to the next level, to not just be circling around the base of the mountain anymore, but getting on, onto that, that wheel, that wheel of promotion that is, you know, is just, is just turning, that the Spirit of God is just inviting you to come up higher. What are you going to do moving into this next year? How are you going to position and align yourself to go up to the next level. We can sit back all day and we can just hope and we can pray, you know, that God will make it happen. But there are invitations and I think there are people that God is saying that you need to be part of this Emerging Prophets Ontario School. You need to be part of it. 
that this is the key for your upgrade and that there is a price that we need to pay. And if you have a problem with the tuition, so two things about the tuition, it's $2,000 tuition. And I know that sounds like a lot of money, 2000 Canadian. So the launch program that I have invested for myself to be in this last year, it cost me $7,000 Canadian. So I'm certainly not asking you to pay anything even close to the price that I have paid. But there is something about making a sacrifice and an investment. And the second thing about finances, because finances is really where people are finding themselves, you know, where this is the biggest objection that I come to people. I, I think I know at least, at least half a dozen people um, who have told me like, no, don't have the finances, can't do the school. It's all about the money. It's probably more than half a dozen people. We have to be able to shift mindsets and to move out of this place. Because if we have these prophetic words and these promises that, okay, you're going to be, you know, if you believe you're called to be um, a prophetic voice or a prophet or an, a leader or an influencer, and you're going to break in and you're going to have this kind of impact and you're going to, you know, be a world changer and you're going to do all these things. How are we going to do these things if we can't sort out and come up with $1,000, $2,000. If we allow ourselves to be so limited in our thinking and not have eyes to see that God has put something in our hands to create wealth, that where there is a will, there is a way. Sometimes we just have to say yes. And God, how are you going to... For some of us, this is the first obstacle towards your destiny. And you can have all these promises, all these things, all these trainings, these schools, these people who want to mentor you, you can have all these things all out here. But if we can't get over this hurdle of, op of finances, then how are we going to get to the place of impact and the place of influence that God is calling us to? I hear the voice of Keith Ferrante in my head and I'm going to say it because he said it first. It's going to sound a little harsh. He says, he's like, well, if you can't come up with $2,000, you're not ready to be a prophet. Ouch. How much do you want your destiny? Yeah. So that's my little, um, Compel, I know. Valerie, you know it. You can hear Keith saying that, right? If you can't overcome the poverty mindset and limited thinking to get to the next level, how are you going to apprehend your destiny? And the vision that I was talking about, so the second wheel, that little wheel, that little miracle round, that little one that was, you know, Jesus took my hand and said, come on, you got to get away from this, this childish, this limited, this little thinking. For some people, that wheel, it's your limited income. For some of us, whether we're, you know, maybe we're on welfare or we're on disability or we're retired or there's, you know, different reasons that we feel like, oh, well, we only have this much. God is saying, no, there is no limit in my kingdom. So we need to get off this wheel of limitation. Even though it served us for a time and a season and it was comfortable for a time and a season, we need to get off it. We need to get into the kingdom entrepreneurial mindset because, guys, the parable, I know I said I was going to prophesy over some people, so I will. I will get there. <laughs> um, but I'm just really feeling the fire on this. the parable of the talents. Whether you're given one talent, five talents, or 10 talents. <coughs> Excuse me. 
the Lord, the master who came back to the servants to see what they had done with the talents. The one who took the talent and buried it and did not multiply. There was a requirement to take what was put in our hands to steward it well and to be a creator of wealth, to be able to multiply. There was a requirement. It was the expectation. And for those who did not do it, what did he say to the one who buried his talent? He said, you wicked and lazy servant. And he took what he had and gave it to those who were faithful. And there are streams flowing from heaven, from the very throne of God. So guys, we need to position ourselves. This is the time for not just one, not two, not three, multiple streams of income. And so we need to expand ourselves beyond the limitations of our thinking to be able to prepare ourselves. God is pouring it out. But if we don't have any vessels to contain what he's pouring out, how are we going to receive it? How are we going to receive it? I think right now, I think I have five streams of income. ultrasound, doTERRA, my essential oil business, mentorship, emerging profit school, prophetic consulting. Guys, it's not as hard as we think. You don't need to have five careers, but there are ways that God is wanting to bring the wealth into the hands of the righteous so that we can rise up. You know, part of, um, I know I'm about prophetic training and profit training and raising up companies of profits. But um, <clears throat> I'll let the little secret out um, for those of you, you know, some of you already signed up for my school and you don't even know this. Not only are you gonna be raised up in your prophetic destiny, but there is a kingdom entrepreneurial grace that is gonna come with it because I'm called to raise up kingdom, prophetic kingdom entrepreneurs. So I've been doing the prophetic gift training. Now I'm doing the profit training but the entrepreneur training is coming there. You know, I'm already thinking like many, many steps ahead, but this is how God is going. This is how we're going to have our impact in the kingdom. We're going to bring heaven to earth. Yeah. It's through us using what he's put in our hand to bring into the kingdom. We got to get away from charity donation mindset model where, you know, this kind of like a church welfare mentality and we have to realize that the economics of the kingdom, we're not subject to the economics of this world. We are not. And our daddy has unlimited resources that he has made available to us. So, <clears throat> all right, that's my little plug. If you're in Ontario, go to emergingprofitsontario.com. Apply now. School starts next week. I know I have more students out there than the ones who've already applied. So apply to the school if you want to move forward. You know, lay your objections before the Lord and let him speak to them. Get aside, aside from your, your natural reasoning and thinking and your old ways of being and say like, okay, where do I want to go and what steps am I going to take to get there? Yeah. Yeah. It's time. It's a new day. It's a new year. And we are about to be let out of the gate like horses entering into the race. Yeah, so good. So good. I encourage myself. All right. Hello, hello. If you're still watching, just drop me a little emoji like Kara Welk. Drop me the beautiful shining star. Alisa, Katie, Janine, Lizzie, Tozer. Hello, Lizzie. Lizzie has signed up for this school. She's joining, joining us next week. So excited. All right. Who is Holy Spirit highlighting? Della, are you are you putting in your your order for, for the, the wedding? I see the wedding ring there. Yeah, maybe Della, maybe you're gonna be one of those. Uh... Yeah. Guys, if you're believing that for your guys talking about 
divine, like godly relationships that have been um, this time of divine relationship and connection. I feel like there's so many people who, okay, Della, you're like, you're, you're there. You're like, yes, we're like putting in our orders for godly Christian husbands to come in in 2024. Anybody else going to agree with us? Della and I, Kara, I think you, you were putting in your request there. <laughs> it is time for kingdom marriages because, you know, one can put a thousand to flight, but two, 10,000. So yeah, so good. Lizzie, Lizzie's saying yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Walter Williams. Walter, are you still here? I see the lightning bolts. Yeah. Walter, Walter in Sweden. I don't know what time of the night it is there. Must be like two o'clock in the morning. Walter, wow. Man. I feel like uh, 2023 was a real year of you. Um, it was such a time of awakening for you, Walter. It was just such a time of you of just like unrealized dreams coming into fulfillment. And I just saw that like 2023 was really a year of like beginning again, again. And I just see you like so positioned. I can see... I see the childlike faith and the hunger of your heart. And I see you positioned in the, in the secret place and you in this place of such attentiveness before the Lord. And in that place of just like such deep, deep surrender. I just see you in this place of, of the surrender and just really like pulling aside and having an ear towards heaven and being in this place of intentional like, okay, Lord, I, I want to, like, as Jesus only did what he saw his father do, and as Jesus only said what he heard his father say, like, I see you in that kind of, like, place and positioning, and I see you grow, having grown in such intimacy with him that you're just getting, like, closer and closer, and I see you being, like, like an Enoch, like someone who is real, like a real friend of God, and someone who really walks with God, and, and God really, really enjoys your company, Walter, and I just see you just being in that place of like really, you know, walking with him in that place of friendship. And I just see him speaking. Um, I just, I see you being able to communicate with such purity and such clarity, um, kingdom concepts with a simplicity and just an ease of understanding um, like you're speaking to adults, but it's like speaking in such a way that even um, a child could understand. And I just see the Lord get really giving you this grace with words. And I just see your heart of compassion. And you're just truly like Jesus, that Jesus was moved with compassion. And you have that sense of tenderness. And I see you being one who is willing to even turn aside and to stop for the one. And I see that many times you have been on your way and you have had a plan and you've had um, like an agenda, like in a way that, you know, you were going, but, but that you, you were willing, it's like the Lord was able to stop you in your tracks and you were able to turn aside. And I'm even seeing like, like, like the good Samaritan being willing to pay a price. And I see Walter that you've paid some prices, um, in the secret place in, in, in hiddenness, um, very much like the good Samaritan did where it's like you saw those who did not have and it's like you were willing to give up. Um, it, it's like I see you almost like giving up like the shirt off your own back in some instances. And so I just see sacrifices that you have made at great cost of yourself. And the Lord is going to honor you for these. And I see he's going to honor you. Um, I, he's going to honor you uh, before men. And I just see like, it's like the scripture where it, it just says like you you know, I was in prison and you visited me. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was hungry and you fed me. And it's like, Walter, I just see you as being that one who's like, Lord, but when did I do this? And he just says like, like what you did to the least of one of these you have done to me and you have lived a lifestyle of 
service by loving his people and serving his people and doing these acts of kindness and service and things that to you at times just, I mean, it's just so second nature to you. You've forgotten most of the things, but I hear the Lord says, you may have forgotten Walter, but I've not forgotten. And I've written them down all in your book. And there is not a single thing that you are not going to be rewarded for because I have taken note. Yeah. So bless you, Walter. You are his faithful servant, his son, his friend. Yeah. Hello, Rebecca Greck. Good to see you. Welcome. All right. Who is highlighted next? Okay, Valerie McDonald. You've been hanging in, hanging in. This is really good. The, I, I try not to take medications very often, but... I, I did, my mom gave me some Buckley's and uh, I took this before getting on and it's actually really helping. I try and keep it as natural as possible, but you know, some nights you just lay down and you just start coughing and so Buckley's might taste like pine needles, but it, it's really helping me out today. All right, who did I say? Valerie McDonald, Valerie. <laughs> wow, <clears throat> Valerie. Ooh, yeah, you're welcome, Walter. You're welcome. Valerie. <laughs> wow, you're just riding the winds of the spirit. You are just riding and... <laughs> I'm literally seeing you as the butterfly. You have already gone through the transformation. You've, you've gone through, you've been out of the cocoon. You have been in this place of like, really, I just see this place of like discovering and you've been in this season of, um, of like discovering, like, what am I capable of? Like, what can I actually do? And I just, I can see like this delight in your heart and almost like, oh, you literally said that to yourself. Oh, that's so good. Or to your friend yesterday. So good. Um, so it's like, I just see you in this place of delight and it's just like, it's like you've been exploring life um, with this fresh perspective and almost like seeing things for the first time because it was like you you were in the cocoon for so long and so like now that you're out it's like you've just been like you've been like giddy with excitement and just like oh my goodness like all of these things that god has spoken over me like they could actually come to pass because there was that place you know, of like in the cocoon where it was just like, oh my goodness, I'm mush. Like, is anything going to come of this? And it's like, now you're out and I just see your heart just like overflowing with so much gratitude and you're just seeing the Lord's faithfulness and how like even all the places of pain and patience, like he's not wasted. He's not wasting even a single one. And it's like, you're in this place of, of, of freedom and exploration and just really discovering it's like discovering what's in you and what you can do. And I just see you stepping out in these new things. And you're like, oh my goodness, like I can do that too. And you step out and do this other new thing. You're like, oh my goodness, I'm so good at this. And I see you stepping out in this other. And it's like, you're going to step. And Valerie, there's something financial connected to it. I was talking about like kingdom entrepreneurship and, and streams. You know, like Valerie, position yourself. Position yourself to receive because there are things... Um, there's things and even things in the realm of business and, and entrepreneurship and, and just making money that things that in the last season before, you know, before the cocoon, you would just be like, no, that's not me. I can't do that. That's not my thing. I'm not whatever. But it's like now there's this whole sense of like, okay, hold on a second. Like there is this limitless possibility. And so it's like, I see you are in this time and especially in this next like enjoy this next three months. There's, you're going to continue in this thing of just like, it's like a delightful exploration and really like w riding the winds of the spirit and testing some things out. And it's really fun. And it's, it's going to be like really beautiful. But then I see like kind of around a three month mark, there is just like this, this like 
um, very stark shift. And so like in this three months, it's really a time to explore, like, like explore, try some things out, see what you like and all that. But then you're going to know exactly where you are to invest in it. It's, I see the transformation from the flittering wings of the butterfly that is just from here to there to the wings of the eagle as you rise. And so this transformation is taking place and you're going to rise up and you're going to have such like that eagle's vision and you're going to know. And I see you just as after all of this exploration and discovering what resonates with your spirit, what brings you life, where is the finance, the, the possibilities for financial increase, where, you know, what are the things that you, you can align with as you're just like gathering information as you're going here in there and then you are going to come and you're going to have this vision and this laser focus and you are going to put things into action with this like this this incredible intentionality and i just see god giving you he's it's like you're you're just going here to there but it's like you keep going up these higher levels of elevation and so eventually you get up to this place in this high elevation and you're in this place where only eagles can see and from this place you're going to realize that you have been transformed into the eagle that you were called to be and you're just going to know and you're just going to see and you're going to look down and you're just like i just see you having this vision And it's like for such a time as this, I know that I know that I know that I have been called forth for this. And wow, daddy, I knew you were good, but I didn't know that you were this good. Valerie, you need to do some kind of prophetic act. I think there is a like remove the ball and chain of poverty thinking off of your ankle. Throw it on the ground. I think you were listening with me from the beginning. I was talking about the passing through the veil into this next level of glory. You're going through the veil, that ball and chain's not coming with you. It can't. Yeah. So I bless you. I bless you to rise up on these new heights, Valerie. Oh, you have such a good season, such a good season. But yeah, really, really enjoy, enjoy these next three months of exploration. Yeah, and just discovering what you like. Yeah, so beautiful. Yes, dancing on the fragments, that's awesome. Powerful, prophetic acts are so powerful. You know, prophetic acts, we do things in the natural to bring a shift in the spirit realm. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Oh, love it. Thank you. Thanks for the feedback. I really, yeah, guys, I really appreciate the feedback. Looks like Valerie and Walter that those words um, blessed you, really hit, hit the target. I see lots of arrows hitting the target. Yeah, you know, I actually got a prophetic word um, for myself from uh, as Dave, David Cuppet. And uh, he, I think it was in August and he was talking about you know, my words hitting the mark and, um, and that he was, that God was going to give me a bigger bow. And, uh, I had this vision. So, you know, think of the bow and arrow and you shoot the arrows, you know, and so you think of that, I was thinking of that, like that word, God is going to give me a bigger bow. It's going to give me a bigger bow because I can hit the mark. And then I was thinking, what are the arrows? What, why do you need a bigger bow? Why do you need the arrows? And I thought of the proverb that they said, I'm probably gonna misquote this, and it talked about the man, the man whose quiver is full of arrows, like children, like the blessing that children are, and like it's like having your quiver full of arrows, having a lot of children. And you know, I'm single and I don't have children. And, um, you know, all my life, because I come from a family of 10 children, I'm the sixth born, all my life my vision was just, I thought I would just get married and I would have either four to six children. That was the number I picked. Because, you know, I'm the sixth born, so I thought six was a good number. I'm so grateful for my parents who had a ridiculous number of children. Because if they had stopped before six, I would not have been able to be in this family. But my point was the children in the bow. And so I was making this connection 
of um, the larger bow and the quiver full of arrows. You know, and there's, hello, Angela Holloma, love you, girl. You know, that, that verse that talks about, um, there's a verse that talks about like many more are the children of she who never bore or many more are the children of the barren than, you know, she who's nursing, has nursing children. And I always took that as a promise for myself, even though I don't have children in the natural. And I just had the sense that like, you know, because even natural children, they are lent to you by God. They don't belong to you. So don't let your identity be wrapped up in your children. Though you get to raise them. But many more are the children of he, she, who never bore. And I was thinking about it and I was like, you know, my mom had 10 children. My mom had 10 children in the natural. That natural, that's pretty amazing. She has 24 grandchildren and two great grandchildren. So that's 10 plus 26, 36 offspring. That's pretty good. My mom's pretty amazing. You know, 36 offspring she has. You know, I've had almost 40 students come through the prophetic mentorship program already. And I have the Emerging Prophet School is coming this week. And guys, I'm not going to say how many people have signed up. There's a number that has signed up. And I'm so grateful every time another one of you signs up, I am just like, I'm so grateful and I'm so, it is a privilege, you know, it is a privilege to be able to be there for three of you, for five of you, for eight of you, for 20 of you. And I'm so grateful for everyone, but I want to have my quiver full. Because God said he was gonna give me a bigger bow and you need a you have bigger bow, you need more arrows. And so arrows speak of the spiritual offspring because, you know, it's not just about me. The school's not about me. This ministry is not about me. Being called to be a prophet is not about me. The apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are for the equipping of the saints. We are given not to make names for ourselves, not to just have big platforms, not for people to like put us up. We are given to build up and empower the body of Christ. So if you want to ask, is a church or a movement or, you know, because there's a lot of parachurch ministries, is it truly apostolic and prophetic? It's apostolic if people are empowered it is prophetic if people have a voice because it's not the empowerment and the voice of the person who is doing the teaching. It is about the equipping and the raising up. It's time to equip and raise up. And just, I'm going to go back to my prophetic word. So from the beginning, so if you're just tuning in now, you'll have to go back and listen to it. But I talked about the shifting of the second cycle to the third where God is taking us. And from passing through the veil, you know, I passed through as a child. I came out as an adult. And in that passing through in the crossing over, it's the crossing over into this next season. There is a maturing there is a growing up. No longer are we the children, but we are the spiritual. We need to be, first we need to have our identity so rooted and grounded in Christ. We need to know who we are so that we can be true spiritual parents. We can be mothers and fathers. That's what the fivefold is for, to raise up, to empower, to equip, to send up. I want to train up healthy prophets with healthy new covenant foundations. Yeah, that's what this is all about. Well, I'm quite delighted that I only coughed, I think, two or three times. And uh, so that's so good. Uh, hello, Amanda Beckford. I saw you tuning in there. Good to see you. Love you, girl. Amanda is another one of my students in the school. Amanda and Lizzie are in here, and then I have Katie and Todd was on here as well from the mentorship group. Guys, it's such a good year. You know, so most of you guys are not in Ontario. And uh, yeah, most of you are not in Ontario, and so you can't be part of the school. I am still running my prophetic mentorship group, and um, there are some 
improvements, some adjustments, some upgrades that are gonna come, um, we'll say in the next month, you know, cause I'm just giving birth to this one baby. And um, it's funny, I'm like about to give birth to this baby, which is the Emerging Prophets Ontario School. But the last couple weeks I've been having like sickness in the morning and um, I was feeling a little nauseous and, and I was like, oh, I'm pregnant again. <laughs> So it's like one baby's coming forth, but there's new things and there's new there's new ideas. And so, you know, the school's starting, but then, you know, I have the global mentorship program that I'm not gonna promote that right now, but it's still happening. It's still happening. So, you know, I have people even from, from British Columbia, Newfoundland, Massachusetts, Germany. Um, so that's a whole other world, but it's all about equipping. So just wanna ask you, what are you doing to apprehend your destiny? What are you doing to leave behind the old, to lay down, you know, there is something for every one of us. You know, I have a whole list of, you know, things that I'm not taking, that I had in 2023, that I'm not taking into 2024 with me, you know, and I'm so happy to be leaving certain things behind, you know, certain, you know, guys, for some of us, it's, it's rejection. For some of us, it's orphan thinking. For some of us, it's just uh, insecurity, fear of man, whatever it is, you know, this sense of smallness. It talked about poverty thinking. These are things we want to lay down and leave behind us so that we can cross over. We're crossing over into the new territory, but we need to become be unhindered through the past. But it's not of our striving. It's simply positioning ourselves in line with Jesus, following him in through the veil, through the veil that gave us access into the most holy place and allowing all the things of the carnal nature in the past to fall to the grand ground. Jesus, his death on the cross, it accomplished so much more for us than we have any idea. We, are, we died with him, we were buried with him, we were raised with him, and now this is the season to understand what it means to be ascended with him. We need to ascend with him. The windows of heaven are open. And this is the time for us to rise up and to really realize first what it means to be a son and daughter so that second we can realize that we have a place seated with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords seated with Christ on high in the heavenly place now that this is a place of an inheritance that we have access to. All right, guys, thanks so much. This has been so much fun. I've missed being on here for the last couple of weeks. But um, I was coughing pretty, pretty bad. Um, but yeah, so good to be feeling better and so happy for 2024. If you were on, in Ontario, www.emergingprofitsontario.com. Hit the apply today button. School starts next week. It's gonna be amazing. You need to be there.